I think we can start. Um, anybody that wants to come in later. So, I'm, hello, I'm Jo Ventura. I work for Wunder. Uh, I work remotely from this beautiful city of Darmstadt in Germany, a city which you all will know a lot better uh, in two months. Um, I'm part of the Portuguese Drupal community and I'm also very happy that you're here in Lisbon. Um, I'm going to, to present on Git and Composer workflows for Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. So one of the things I do uh, nowadays is I maintain the Drupal 7 branch of uh, Drupal project, uh, the Drupal Composer project. Most of you have been using the, the Drupal 8 branch uh, maintained by a lot of people, including mostly uh, Florian Weber, who is around here uh, in, in the Drupal dev days. Uh, I'm so in love with Composer that at one point I said, I don't want to deal with bloody Drush make again. So I decided to make the, the Drupal 7 branch of Composer usable again. And I asked Florian to help me. And this is a bit of what I'm going to talk also today. So first and foremost, and uh, I apologize if you have to see this in every session. I am the one responsible for this. So thank you to Actia, thank you to Wunder, Platform SH, and to Javali and to Commerce Guys, uh, Einmal Internet, Bloom Idea, Every Snowball, Thunder, and MSE Labs, and all the nice sponsors that we didn't include here because they are silvers. Um, so again, so the summary of this talk, we'll talk about a bit about Drupal build systems, Drush Make, Composer, and also talk about some Git best practices. Um, so first with Drupal build systems, this, the part where I'm motivated to speak about this is sometimes one of the things I do in my work is I do audits of Drupal sites. And I am very happy when I see one that actually uses Drush Make. I have to say though, I haven't met any yet in any of the audits. <laughs> so <laughs> they, that part never leaves me happy. Um, I guess that there's a reason why they pay my company to do an audit because they have suspicions that the previous developers were not following best practices. And using Drush Make is one of the normal uh, and most basic uh, best practices in Drupal 7 sites. So the good news and the bad news is Drush Make is dead. Uh, it's, it used to be a part of Drush from 5 to 8. Uh, Drush 5 to Dr Drush 8, it's still in Drush 8. It's just that most of us that are now doing uh, Drupal 8 are no longer using Drush 8. We are now using Drush 9. And in Drush 9, if you try to use any of the make stuff, it's gone, it's not there anymore. Um, it was actually quite a complex beast. Uh, it was, as you'll see in a while, there's two flavors of the make file. Um, you can choose whichever you like more. Uh, it allowed you to build with exact versions of core uh, and projects and libraries. And exact, I mean, you could also say uh, just build this and not specify any version and then it would get the latest version uh, that it found. But there was no semantic versioning um, in Drush because it simply couldn't support that. Um, the one thing that we all love about Drush Make is the just-in-time patching. The way we work in Drupal, we use patches a lot because things tend to make their time to, to go through the issue queues and to be uh, ready to be committed and then to be uh, committed. So we, whenever we do a professional projects, we patch it. And it had support for Drush Make, had support for Git. Woohoo! SVN. Everybody, anybody remember SVN subversion? You might all be lucky to not have been in Drupal when the great MIT migration came along. But there was a time when everything in Drupal was subversion. 
and it was not happy. <laughs> uh, and then there's this thing, bazaar, and you can also use copies, etc., etc. So the way to make a Drush uh, site with make, uh, or better yet, uh, the, the way to take a uh, running site and to generate a, uh, a make file out of that would be you run Drush make generate project make, and then it generates something like this. So this is the ini format, very PHP-like. Uh, ini is also because it's the, the format that was used by Windows uh, before they introduced Active Directory. And it's very, uh, it's like, it's a lot like arrays and very verbose, um, not pretty to understand. And then there's the YAML format, which we all now use because we are using YAML all the time nowadays, especially in, uh, in our new configuration files uh, for the config management. Um, but so this one is basically saying, okay, I'm running Drupal 7 core, API, you can forget that. I'm putting all my projects as I should within contrib um, because that's what you do unless you want to, uh, spaghetti soup of everything in the same directory. Then you say, okay, I want Drupal version 759. Uh, if you omit this, it probably installs the latest version of Drupal. Uh, but there's no way to say uh, Drupal more than 759, which is the latest one that was fixed by, by the Drupal Geddon uh, 3. Forgot the numbers. Um, and then you've got you can specify other modules, and then there's, this is the way that you specify a patch. Very easy, very easy to understand, very readable. Uh, you can also do themes, so Zen here is a theme. Um, and uh, we might, let's try to, to build simply. So that make file is uh, this one. The, this one actually is the one in, uh, in any format, and um, well, let me move this aside Russian, because it might be that the internet plays stuff with me. Um, okay. do rush. Rush. And then you do drush make dot dot ddd. Say that you want to do it in the current directory, and yeah, it downloaded Drupal 7.59 everything that I specified, and then it patched views with the patch that I specified. It generates this nice file, patches.txt, that um, will inform anyone coming in which patches were applied to a given module, and then it's okay. And then we, and now we have a site that, uh, that would work if I had the settings.php correctly configured, but you can see index PHP of Drupal, um, and that was all just built from the simple make file. So if this were a, a project that I was setting to Git, probably the only thing there at this moment would be that make file, because I didn't build any of the rest. Now, Composer. So we've been, especially everyone that's been doing Drupal 8, Anyone here still only doing Drupal 7? Oh, good. So we're all out of, we, we've all seen better lights. <laughs> um, so the, the composer is the dependency manager for PHP. This is one of those things that we did when we reached out of the island. Um, composer uses this packages.org as default. Uh, and we, in Drupal world, we use packages.drupal.org. Uh, you don't find modules within the default packages unless some people have added them there. But drupal.org includes its own packages to, for Drupal 8 here. Um, this little 8 and this little 7 is one of those things that I don't like because it's the packages is embedding some part of the, um, of the major version as part of the URL, which is weird. Uh, 
um, I mean, if you have a module in Drupal, and that module is uh, version 1.0 for Drupal 8, the correct version, complete version name for that module is 8.1.0, um, but you're going to specify it in Composer only as 1.0, because 8 is at this level, which is not so pure as it should be, but this is what we have at the moment. So, and most people don't know there's also a Drupal 7 uh, composer that generates uh, as good packages, as good um, a, an install with packages with a composer as, um, as with Drupal 8. A little small introduction to semantic versioning. Um, so you've got, when we're following this all in Drupal 8, uh, you've got major version, minor version, and patch version. This also has to do with how backwards compatible you are. Um, so currently in Drupal core, we're at 8.5.4, which means that we're at Drupal 8 major version, which is not backwards compatible with Drupal 7, as everybody knows. Uh, and the last one is just some bug fixes. So from 5.3 to 5.4, you should not be introducing new features. Drupal 8.6, when it gets released very, very soon, we'll introduce some new features, and that's why the minor version gets increased. Um, and you can use all these, um, all these rules to specify a version in Composer. The ones that are important, and we'll touch on them just in a while, are the tilde and the caret. Um, it's really hard to know the difference between the two of them, but if you look, when you specify like the complete version number um, and you use tilde, it will stay within version 1.2, whereas with caret, it actually will st go up to 2.00. So with caret, it actually, you just say, uh, it needs to be bigger than 1.2.3, but that also means it can go into version 1.3, 1.4, etc., etc. Carrot is probably the one that you should be using and not tilde. Tilde will lock you within uh, quite uh, limited branch numbers. Um, how do you work with Composer? So you create your own Composer file, you run Composer update, you want to deploy your site, you've got a Composer lock that got generated, you run Composer install, you want to add some new modules from Drupal.org, you run Composer require Drupal project. See the carrot there? It should always be the one that you try. And dash dash with dependencies. Dash dash with dependencies because <coughs> the project itself might specify, okay, I need like something like views um, in Drupal 7, for instance, needs um, C tools. And it might be that uh, the latest version of views requires the latest version of C tools. And if you don't specify with dependencies, you don't get the newest version. You're just uh, requiring the, the current version of the module. And <coughs> when you commit stuff, commit the composer JSON and the composer lock. Because this, this is actually where your configuration management is. When you built the site the last time in development and you tested it and everything was working fine and the composer lock got generated. Uh, maybe Symfony was at a version that did not have a bug. You commit, you send out to your, to your uh, fellow team members, um, but if you're not doing this and you're not specifying composer lock, when they run composer install, a new composer lock will get generated and they will get maybe new versions of everything. And maybe a bug surfaces that uh, should not be there because when you did the work, it was not there. It just got introduced at deployment time. So save yourself some work um, and add your configuration management lock file. Um, Drupal project, so Drupal project is the, the one that you've all been using. Um, it's a composer template. Most people don't know it also for D7, 
uh, and it provides all of these um, stuff. The Drupal project for Drupal 7 needs to do some extra stuff. So because Drupal 7 does not ship with the composer.json, the Drupal 7 PHP extension requirements uh, must be provided by your composer.json file. Um, there are, because, uh, because Drupal 7 is actually kind of weird in the way where stuff is located, you've got your contrib and custom code within sites, all modules, contrib, custom, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and this all resides under Drupal core. So whenever you would uh, update Drupal core, if you don't have preserved path, uh, the preserved path extension of for Composer, all of that gets wiped out. And uh, as uh, as a Drupal 7 project maintainer, I've heard from many people, oh, but I just, like for instance in Drupal Geddon, uh, people were using code Drupal project, they did uh, Composer update, it got the newer version of Drupal, but all their custom code, <laughs> gone. Hopefully it was in Git. Uh, why? Because they failed to configure preserve paths correctly. Um, yeah, so, and then, same as in Drupal 8, you've got the installer paths configuration. Um, yeah, and uh, the preserve paths is uh, already uh, correctly defined for uh, the, the normal uh, best practices in Drupal 7 deployment. This is how you create a project. Um, the one for Drupal 8, uh, see there, you specify 8.x.dev, uh, and for Drupal 7, exactly the same. It's just you change the major version number. This is something that's applicable and very few people use it, and it, this is applicable for, for Drupal 8 and for Drupal 7 Composer. Um, most people run different versions of PHP <coughs> sorry, in their development environments than in their servers. Uh, people that are using virtual machines um, to mimic the server environment, you don't need to worry so much about this. Everyone else does, and it's very often that uh, problems arise here. <coughs> Oops. Um, why? Because uh, Symfony. Symfony uses a different version. If your server is running Drupal 5, uh, PHP 5, then if it's uh, running PHP 7. And if you, during your development, are running PHP 7, you create a composer lock that uh, specifies Symfony for PHP 7, you deploy that to the server, uh, except your server is not running PHP 7, so that Symfony is going to fail, and because Symfony failed, your Drupal failed. So do yourself a favor and uh, find out which version of PHP is running on, the, on, the, on your server and uh, add this config uh, to your composer JSON. <coughs> okay, better. Um, so this is basically a composer format um, that I got from from Drupal 8, uh, from Drupal 7 site, uh, you specify the correct composer packages, uh, the packages for from Drupal. You need all of these, so installer, patches, preserve paths that I, spe as I specified before, and then you specify your modules, uh, and usually you also give use the, the version of Drush that you that you're using. Um, but the caveat is most of us are already using Drush Make. How do we move to Composer when we are uh, running uh, already our sites for, for a very long time? I mean, nobody's developing new sites in Drupal 7 nowadays. So the good news is 
the current dev version of Drush has this command, which uh, can convert a make file from um, uh, any make file format into Composer. Um, there are several things it does not do. It does not convert libraries. Um, it does not transform, uh, it, it does not output a completely uh, compatible uh, Composer JSON in comparison with the, the Drupal 7 project branch. So if you want, you can go in and add the scaffolding that uh, the Drupal 7 branch uh, has, uh, which is basically all of these, um, all of these requirements. And you also need to add a patch to C. Wigan's Composer patches. So Composer patches is the one uh, package that was developed for uh, the extension of Composer that was developed so that we can still use patches. So anybody using patches in uh, Composer nowadays, most likely it's using this. Problem is um, preserve paths is shooting a hook that notifies Composer patches um, to, to pay attention to it that Composer patches is actually not uh, ready to accept. So there is a patch that you need to add um, and I'll show you just now. Hopefully nothing will go wrong. Um, So we've got the DDD 2018 make that we had before and I'm just going to convert it and now we've converted it. And as you can see, you've got all the extensions that PHP, uh, that Drupal 7 requires from PHP. Uh, again, this is one of those things. If PHP, if Drupal 7 included its own composer JSON file, like Drupal 8 does, we would not need this here because Composer would take care of that. Um, then you've got installers. You've got the stuff that I added to my previous uh, make file. And you've got here all the stuff for the installer path saying that, um, well, your modules will get installed in your contrib modules will get installed in websites, all modules contrib. Um, and you've got the patch that was in the previous make file also here, uh, following the, the patches format. And you've got already some of the preserved paths correctly defined uh, here. So this would say whenever you upgrade Drupal, don't delete anything under modules contrib, under modules custom, under modules features, which are the, the best practices of where to place uh, stuff in Drupal. So all of that would remain, would be preserved by, by the Composer install. Um, and we could actually use this to build, uh, to build a site. So if we do Composer update, should be cached, hopefully. <laughs> well, yeah, so briefly, and because this screen is quite small, you could see it got Drupal 7, it got views, it also got C tools. Uh, because it's a requirement, so, which was something that, if I remember correctly, is I did not specify in the make file. So in my previous project, I would actually not be able to run views. And you've got Zen, and then you've got all the rest that basically, because we included Drush, you have also all the requirements that Drush itself added, which are Symfony Console and all that. 
all the stuff there. So this gives you in web, same as in Drupal 8 project, um, a running Drupal 7 site with index here and uh, sites. Uh, remember these modules and these themes are not in, like in Drupal 8. I keep doing that mistake nowadays when switching between the two of them. And we can find um, views here and uh, websites, all modules contrib, all of them, man all of that managed by, by Composer. So I'm very happy and honestly I've converted all my sites using this, um, this drush make convert uh, that, um, that uh, was added recently to, to Drush. It's, from what I remember, uh, Moshe only added it after the last release. So it's still uh, in uh, the latest dev version. So if it doesn't work for you, uh, change your Drush, uh, change your, your composer or whatever you're using to download Drush so that it gets the latest dev version and not the one that um, that this tagged with the latest release. So now some Git best practices. Um, and now this all ties up with Composer. I think we're all, we're all following this, so I'll go very briefly through here. Um, most people nowadays, they've got a few branches that are being used to manage how, how, you, how you manage your site. So you've got a master branch, which is the one that you're running in live production. Then you've got something like a develop or a stage branch that's in your staging site. And then you've got some, some feature branches which you at one point take this branch out from, from staging. You do your, your changes. Uh, in this case that I highlight there, um, the feature never got uh, integrated. Maybe it was a dead end. Maybe somebody was just playing with it. Or maybe the client is still reviewing it and saying, oh, I need time and uh, my boss needs to authorize this. But you can see others, other branches got uh, forked out of stage. People were developing it on the feature branch and then it got merged into stage. And then later on, um, it got merged into, into, into master together with some other um, release tags that are there. Um, anybody not following this uh, workflow? Well then. <laughs> um, when using Git and Composer, you need, you should configure Git ignore correctly. Um, you should not be adding uh, all the stuff that is built by uh, by Drupal. Um, this is actually one of my uh, my pains with the Drupal 8 project as it is now, and it's a pull request that I added to the Drupal 8 branch, is that it adds uh, a lot of files that belong to Drupal, in and they're not in Git ignore. So index.php, uh, web.config, uh, some example files, all of that is not in git ignore. So anytime that Drupal updates those files, you're adding them to your repository as changes. Uh, honestly, I don't understand why nobody is actually changing web config. Well, or if you are, then configure, uh, sorry, configure git ignore correctly because you want that file there. Uh, but the example files for for that are in the sites uh, in sites example for the services and whatever nobody needs to add those and they change quite often because people are documenting it better sometimes there's typos being fixed and then you upgrade Drupal version and then suddenly your uh, pull request as a typo done by someone and you're, why, why are we changing this file? It came from Drupal, but why is it in my pull request? I just wanted to upgrade versions of Drupal. So do that, uh, add 
and remove all the stuff that's not actually in your project to git ignore. As I said, commit both composer JSON and composer lock. Uh, use semantic versions. So in your composer JSON, don't specify, oh, I'm running Drupal 8.5.4. Do say something like uh, 8, uh, carrot 8.5 or even carrot 8.0. Uh, and that will get you always the latest version of Drupal. So you don't even need, if Drupal 8.5.5 gets released tomorrow, which is a Wednesday, so it might actually happen. Um, I, I don't think it's a security uh, <laughs> Wednesday, so. Um, but in case it happens, then you would not need to go in and change your composer.json. You just do composer update Drupal core, composer lock would get changed, you commit composer lock, you, 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 you push that out over to your, to your server, and that's all the pull requests that you need to do. Um, and also, think of Composer as a development tool. Uh, it's not supposed to be a deployment tool. Uh, we'll get back into that uh, in a while. Also, never run just Composer update naked. Uh, I see a lot of people doing that all the time. Um, and this might actually get you all the latest versions of Symfony. It gets you all the latest versions of every Drupal module. Are you sure that you can? You have the time to test your entire the entire functionality of your site uh, in every sprint that you do? If you do, and you have automated tests, well, forget about this rule. But if you're just saying, okay, <coughs> sorry, uh, I just need to get the newest version of use because it's a security release, then do composer update Drupal views. It will get you only views and the dependencies and it won't update uh, administration toolbar or um, token something. <coughs> um, and never, ever, ever commit the stuff that's in vendor nor um, from anything from Drupal.org or libraries. Um, So, um, yeah, basically what I was saying about naked composer update. If you run, um, if you run it naked, then you'll get uh, that it will update every dependency. Are you ready to test the entire site? If you are, do it. But the second fallback is also do not ever not do that. Uh, so from time to time, think about, okay, we've been running the site, uh, we have time, it, we're not in a rush, no, no urgent security releases. Um, just run, then at that point run Composer update. It will update everything that you have. You get the latest versions of everything. Uh, test the entire site. That's basically it. And then you are in a baseline, you're, uh, you're somewhat newer, if a security release for a module comes that you haven't actually uh, changed anything in it since three years ago, at least you are not jumping um, five or six versions. You, you won't get caught by any surprises um, from anything that you should have uh, tested before. Um, yeah, about Maintaining the, the repositories. Um, your development team uses Git. Um, so the pull requests should just be the stuff that you changed. It should not be the past six months of changes to Drupal core. And this is something I see a lot, is people using Git as a deployment tool. So they push everything into Git. Uh, whenever a new release comes in, and the pull request, you get the pull request for, hey, I've just updated core for a Drupal Geddon 3. Um, here's the pull request, and it's 15,000 lines uh, or 15,000 files even 
of stuff that changed and you're like, yeah, I don't have time to see this. So you're basically accepting a pull request blinded. Um, uh, and you, you're not even sure what's in those files because nobody does, I'm pretty sure. Um, so try not to, to just have the pull request read only your changes. So if you upgraded Drupal and you run composer update correctly, only the composer lock is going to change. With a bit of luck, you can even read the composer lock changes to see, oh, it updated this version of Drupal and Drupal required a new version of Symfony, so it also updated this version of Symfony to that and that. Should be doable, should be readable, uh, and certainly way more readable than reading about all the lines that changed in Symfony, etc. Um, don't use Git for deployment. I mean, people tell me, okay, I'm pretty, I, I need to be able to run the site, the client needs me to be able to run the site and deploy it, so what if Drupal.org goes down? Uh, trust the internet, come on. Drupal.org going down, nobody's doing Drupal again anymore. So we're, <laughs> if the entire internet goes down, nobody cares about, <laughs> it's the zombie apocalypse. So nobody is building and is interested anymore in your site. So go out, survive, uh, try to, to meet the, the people from um, Afro, Walking Dead. They, they, they seem to have a good chance of survival there. Um, yeah, so this is a bit the, the, the recommended Git workflow. So you create a feature branch, you do your work, you rebase your branch um, to the latest changes from the, the parent branch. Uh, this is actually something uh, that's very uh, useful to do every time just before doing uh, a push. Uh, because, well, a, a git com and commit. Because sometimes people change stuff uh, and you're not so much interested in what they changed. It's just they change the same file as you do. So you do um, git, maybe, and that actually happens a lot with config. Um, so you do git add, you do git, git commit, and then it finds, oh, but there are changes. So it will actually create a merge uh, commit. And that merge commit is going to be awfully strange because it's, it's like, yeah, this person committed this, I did my work, and then th there's a merge commit here, and then the merge commit will go back into the branch. Uh, and all, all of that ugliness could have been avoided if you just rebased it before um, doing the rest. In Drupal, do configuration exchange. At this point, you should only have the stuff that you're going to commit. Do a, a git diff. It will show you what you changed. Sometimes people change stuff that doesn't need to be changed. And you'll, at this point, it's very early in the process. You can easily detect, oh, I'm adding this file and why. So at that point you can just revert it or git check out the file that you changed. Maybe you added some part dump somewhere and then you commit, you, you commented it um, and you don't need it anymore. Then do the git add, git commit <coughs> and in whatever you use, uh, GitHub, GitLab, no, I need to delete GitHub there because we all moved to GitLab. Uh, at least, I, I, I still, I, I basically have all of, use all of these three at the same time, also in, in my own projects. And then merge the, into the feature branch, into the parent branch. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so talking about gitignore, um, and how to configure it correctly. There is this little uh, um, exclamation mark thing, which is one of the tricks that you'll see if you look at the Drupal 7 project. Um, basically, this is saying ignore everything under web. So index.php, uh, all the other changelog.txt files so that nothing of that gets added. But then do not ignore all the directories under web. 
because you still want to, to add, um, well, basically sites. Um, but then for, for Drupal 7, uh, it's, I'm telling it to, to ignore uh, some other uh, core files, includes and whatever. I, there is a lot more that I deleted here so that all the thing, uh, all the all of this could, could fit. Um, yeah, and ignore also settings for PHP. Usually these contain all of these or one of these contains some passwords. Uh, unless you're using the, the newer in, uh, the newer um, env uh, includes where you specify your your uh, PHP passwords, your MySQL passwords as um, as PHP environment variables, and then ignore all the files and private. So this is uh, part of Drupal 7 uh, Composer project. Um, you can also adapt part of these to your Drupal 8 if you want to ignore all the crap that's there. Or you can go in search of the pull request that I did and say we should have this. Um, yeah, so my plan for this week, if I have any time, uh, thankfully we have lots of nice social events. Um, I want to work on adding a composer JSON to Drupal 7 core. That would simplify stuff a lot. Uh, there would be several lines of the project that would disappear, and it would make Drupal 7 also uh, work better with composers. Um, and I would want to bring back some of the functionality lost into the Drupal, into Drush 9. Uh, we don't have any way before, remember one of the initial slides, you had a way to create a make file using Drush out of an existing site. We should have a way to generate a composer JSON out of an existing site because sometimes you get a site and you don't want to be bothered with um, figuring out all the little versions. And this is, we have all the infrastructure and the code to, to do this, so it should be quite easy to add this back into Drush 9. Um, yeah, so if you want to contact me, um, that's who I am, Proventura, I'm also around here. Thank you, and any questions? Turn it on. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, it was really useful. Uh, I wanted to ask: Would you recommend actually uh, switching to uh, Composer workflow on existing Drupal 7 sites? And are there any uh, underwater rocks or something? Um, I not only recommend. I think you're crazy to not do that. Um, that all the tools are there to make a to make. I mean, I, I can transform a an existing site into using Composer with like two, three hours of, uh, of minimal effort. Uh, and I do this nowadays when I get an audit. That's one of those things I do. I use the tools to create a Composer version, then I generate a clean site, and then I s check the diffs between what Composer got from me clean and what the site has. And that's my uh, version of ACT that's actually pretty good. I, there was a site that I just recently got from a friend. He told me, oh, my site got hacked. Uh, can you check if there's any salvation? And uh, yeah, it was fun. It was, he had like uh, all the sites, all the PHP files were infected with a Trojan, uh, which was amazing. I, I was really impressed with whatever infected this site because it, it embedded itself into everything. Even the site, the settings.php had, uh, had the Trojan in there to, to change stuff. So, yeah, and it's very easy. You use uh, that if you already have a, an exist a site using a make file. If you don't have a site using a make file, you use that to create a make file and then that 
we'll get you a composer JSON that you can use to run Drupal 7 with composer. Uh, it works, it's very good. It's, um, it will correctly manage your site and build it and reliably and I have had no complaints at, at all about it. All my sites got, when, when Drupal Geddon 2 and 3 came along, all my sites were, had been, had passed through this and I just ran composer update. Stuff happened and my, my, I didn't even change the composer JSON, I just ch changed the composer lock. Permitted that, deployed the site, the site built the new version um, and within like one hour of the patch being uh, out, I, I had all my sites updated. Just tiny assurement that you were correct. Tomorrow is a bug fix window officially. Okay, okay, good. So tomorrow you can st start preparing 855. <laughs> good. So thank you all for coming. Uh, if uh, again, any questions, you find me. <laughs>